be careful about propaganda, fake news, of limitations to religion from different quarters. I want to guarantee you and to give you my assurance, as I do every religious person in Kenya, that the government of Kenya will protect the place of worship and make sure that this country continues to abide by the Constitution and to live up to our principles as a God-fearing nation. In a country as diverse as ours, we debate, we celebrate, we express ourselves, and we commemorate what we do. But we never lose sight of how we arrived here and why. We should take pride in our diversity, our tolerance, and our achievements as a nation. You have said correctly you make enormous contribution to the commerce, the business, the economy of our country. You also embody philanthropy. We have seen your service in lifting up those in our society who are not uh, the vulnerable in our society. You, we have seen the food distribution, the many acts of charity that are associated with the Hindu community and the Asian community in Kenya, which we deeply appreciate as Kenyans. Because that is our culture, to lift each and every one of us up. And that is the philosophy behind our bottom-up economic transformation agenda. That we must live in a society that leaves nobody behind. It is the reason why, as a government, and uh, you, in your statement you said three fundamental things. That we must feed ourselves, we must educate our children, and we must make sure that there is adequate, available, accessible, affordable health care for our citizens. Those three fundamental things are important to us as a government. It is the reason why we have invested heavily in food production. The reason why today unga that was 230 is now below 100 shillings. Because we want to make sure that citizens at every level can afford a meal. We are not quite there. But we have substantially embarked on that journey. And it is my commitment that progressively we will invest in food production in Kenya, including in irrigation. Our aim is to expand land under irrigation by 500,000 acres by 2027 and another 500,000 acres by 2032 to make sure that we have a million and seven hundred thousand acres under irrigation so that we can feed our nation. I was uh, particularly, you know, challenged by your father, Ashu, of Mombasa Cement. When I was elected, he came to see me. He asked to see me. And I, 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 I invited him and we had a chat here. And he told me, Mr. President, I want to help you in Galana. I want to grow food. I see the ch I feed many people, and he does in Mombasa. I feed many people, and I want to participate in food production. So I told him, Ashu, you're most welcome to this space. Please uh, go ahead and participate in food production. You cannot believe what that great Kenyan did. He left my office, went to Galana, and invested, I think, between three and five billion shillings. He has built 11 dams. He has done an amazing job. So when I got to hear what he had done, and he had no papers, he had no, nobody had given him a, a piece of paper or a lease. He just went there and said, the president has allowed me to do food production. And he went ahead to do it. So uh, when it was brought to my attention and the 
enormous job that he had done. I saw a person with passion to change the lives of ordinary people. That he was not even patient to wait for paperwork to be done. He was in a hurry to produce food for the most needy people because he is in that space. I see what he does. So I offered, I asked my office now to look for him so that we can regularize the paperwork for him. And I even got him some people to help him to uh, do the irrigation because, you know, he's a cement person. So food, produ <laughs> food production is not his uh, forte. So we are now organizing, and I am, I'm looking forward to working with the family, organizing so that we can get you people who can help you with irrigation so that the great investment put in place in Galana by this great Kenyan is benefits the food production capacities of our nation. That was phenomenal. That, that speaks to, I mean, truly patriotic citizens of our country. Let me also say that um, as we celebrate Diwali and as we celebrate what brings us together, what unites us as a nation, and as we think about the future, I was particularly touched by the performance of our children the children that performed here. You all know that children are a blessing to us as families and as a country. And we must go out of our way to do what we have to do for our children. Invest in their education. Invest in their health. Invest in um, their progress. And it is the reason why we are deploying a lot of resources to make sure that our education system is, food, is fit for purpose. In the last two years, we've hired 56,000 teachers, the highest in Kenya's history. We're going to hire another 20,000 teachers in January because we want to make sure that no child in Kenya is left behind as we educate our children. It is the reason why we developed a new funding model, because our children are that important. A student-centered funding model to help fund our children in our TVETs and in our universities, and to make sure that children from vulnerable families get equitable treatment and actually are treated better and are given more facilities because we want to make sure that we equalize the fortunes of the people of Kenya. It is also the reason why we have changed the Edu Afia program that was only limited to secondary school children with insurance. We've now expanded that to include all the children both in primary, in ECD, and all the children of Kenya. They will now be part of an insurance cover system under the UHC program. And it is the reason why we are expanding scope in many other areas to make sure that we carry our children along and we carry the future with us because they are our future. And I am very proud of how you look after your children. We all as a society must mind about what religion can do in forming the character, getting good morals to our children so that we can avoid drug abuse, we can avoid bad character that sometimes undermine our progress as a nation. Parents, all of us, and I'm speaking to religious people, parents must take their place in making sure that we parent, we look after our children, 
We don't go and dump them in school. We don't leave them to the vagaries of their friends. And we don't leave them to, you know, spaces that eventually destroys our children. Because if we destroy our children, we have no future, both as a society and as a country. Finally, let me say that um, I'm very happy that uh, this occasion has come to be. I, uh, we, I have many friends. Kenya has great people from the Asian community in Kenya, and they have made significant contribution to the progress of our nation. Finally, let me tell you something I learned from the Asian community. Ordinarily in Kenya, when we go to church, we put on shoes. Nobody asks you to remove shoes. But I went to Rajasthan in uh, 2018, I think. 2018 and 19, I think. 2018. So I went to Rajasthan. And then it was Christmas, and I was in Udaipur. And I was told there is a church in Udaipur. So I went to this church with an Indian, pre, with an Indian pastor. And uh, it was very interesting to see how custom and uh, religion can come together. So when I arrived in this church, uh, then I was deputy president. To go into the church, you have to remove shoes, like it is done in the Hindu religion. So we had to remove our shoes to be able to go into church. And it was humbling and amazing how I saw the community in Udaipur worship God in in Hindi, you know, and, and it was just something else. Uh, it's not ordinary. And uh, I invited that, um, I think it was called Matthews, a pastor there, an Indian gentleman, and he came to Kenya, and uh, we support his church. That's how <laughs> diversity, you know, diversity of religion, diversity of customs, diversity of um, what we all believe in. So to all of you, um, you must believe in your country. You must believe in Kenya. We must be proud of this country and we must make whatever contributions that we must as a patriot, as people who believe in this great nation called Kenya. Therefore, may these lights guide us towards a future filled with hope, compassion, and unity. I wish each of you a very happy Diwali, filled with peace, prosperity, and joy. And to all those celebrating this joyous occasion, and I have heard from uh, Bimal your request on uh, the issue of um, of having Diwali as a national holiday, um, I will undertake to subject it to the process of government. The speaker is here. If it has to happen, it has to go all the way to parliament. But uh, I want to assure you that uh, we will have made a decision by the next Diwali. <laughs> to all those celebrating this joyous occasion, I extend my very warm Diwali wishes to you and to your families and to all your loved ones and to the people of Kenya. Asante Nisana, and God bless you.